Today we're going to add another color. So we're building up to the full scale colors of the whole box. Now there's boxes with 12 uh, crayons and there's boxes with 120 or more. So choose what you have, see what you have. But we're only picking one red. There's many, many reds. And today we're going to add the color red to the palette. Now red, of course, is a color for, for anything really up close. If we want to warm, it's a warm color. The blue was a cool color, now we add a warm color. Yellow is in between. And we have yellow, in, like in yellow ochre, so we almost already have everything. But when we add red and we balance it, we layer it with everything that's up close, then we're adding a lot of depth to the whole drawing. See that also in, in, in real life. Try to see that. It's, it's sometimes it's very subtle, but uh, today we are going to grab an apple, for example, or I have a mango that we're going to draw. Something red. It might be a red object, a sock or a shoe or whatever, but make it really bright red. But do not forget to also draw the background with it. And then the complementary color is green, which is mixed with blue and yellow. So now we have all the colors to play with to create super depth in, in a drawing. We're building slowly to the whole scale like we can see it. Red is also dangerous. It can overpower a drawing real easy. And uh, these days with with so much interest in plein air painting, you see all the bright colors next to one another. It's full of chroma. To me, it's very busy. I don't like it that much, but I do like red. And when red is used in a very subtle way, a strong, powerful, masterful way, then it adds a lot of richness to the drawing. We take a small still life this time again because I want you to focus on the color and to see the color. If you are not using the colors, you stay with the basic palette, with the earth tones. Try to create richness in a different way, meaning use a lot of different values to create the roundness of the fruit or object that, that we're creating. Even if you have a limited palette, there are warm tones and cooler tones, or grays even. So pick and choose the this, this subtlety of the colors, limited or bright, and we'll go from there. It's a simple still life this time. The mango is for sure very red. I took a bite out of it so that we have some variation in yellows. And there's also a highlight. I have 10 different reds and some yellows. So let's get started making our composition. I uh, also have the cloth that is a little bit different. I always, even though I do not use the viewfinder, I always make a square somewhere in the middle of the page. So if I have different, if it goes outside of the lines, I can erase the lines and then use that. Here are the colors. It's still a very limited palette. We only have like five different colors. Uh, there's blue and red, but the yellow ochre, we still have the yellow. It's still only a couple. And with this limited palette, we can definitely do a lot. Again, I don't use the viewfinder. Uh, maybe I should have in this 
case because of the stripes of the cloth. I actually leave him a little bit alone. So you know the drill by now. Make a drawing of something uh, that you like. This time it has to be red if you're going to use red. Uh, please use the viewfinder to get all the other complicated parts in it as well. Then see what the warm colors are and what the cool colors are. That's how I always start, just like you put a value, like the toning of the paper with a certain value of gray. Now I'm going to do a certain value warm, could have been orange too, or light red, but I chose yellow. And, and we don't have the true yellow, we only have the yellow ochre. So it's a little bit more subdued. Um, we can do better when we have the whole set of colors. But this is a very good start, and uh, I, I solidly, but, but lightly, make the whole mango, except the highlights. I don't have turquoise, like the cloth, so I'm going to build it with yellow and blue. Now also the cloth is more blue, has more blue tones in it, so I go over it with a lot of blue later. You can really perfect this as an art. It's not my medium per se. I like to work with oil paint, but since I'm going to travel a lot, actually I do love to, to master the color pencils. And I do this with you, the students, to, to also learn how to really how the, how the colors really work. And I happen to like it a lot. It's not filling in the lines because, you, yeah, you can do that, but then you don't see all the nuances going from light to dark or change even color. It's not necessarily color, coloring in the lines. It is way more subtle and there's a lot more to see with it. Especially the cloth has a lot of different tones, variations of blue. As you can see, I am setting the tone before I even get the red out. The red has to wait a little bit. I'm speeding up the, the drawing time a little bit here through the video. I can do that. You cannot really do that. Take your time to be meticulous and to really see what's going on. Uh, I can show it to you very slow, but it doesn't. it's too long to watch the video. I'd rather have you spend time on your drawing. Look at how I'm not using any of the, the color yet. I'm just laying the ground of values, where the darkest dark is, where the shadows are, where I really want the emphasis on the fruit to be seen by the viewer. This is brown. I, I actually maybe should have used a little bit more blue because on the shadow side of the mango it, there's a lot of purple and red and blue makes purple as we said. Now there's also reflection on that side and on the bottom. That's the reflection of the cloth in the fruit. It's, it's lightly shiny but not really. I want you to learn to build it up, not copying me, but feel how more pressure or less pressure is going to do the job. It's simple in its means, but it is rich in its results. Have fun with it, good luck, and, and see more than, than you ever seen before. That's the joy of drawing. See you next week.